Hello, this is Mick West from Metabunk.org. So I was recently at a Flat Earth conference. I was actually uh, debating Nathan Thompson on whether the Earth is flat or round. Very interesting conference. And one of the interesting things that came out of it was that I met a cool guy called Nathan Gonzalez. And he gave me these five photographs that he'd taken from Huntington Beach. These are photographs of Catalina Island, which is about 32 miles from his location. And he was showing me these and thinking that uh, they were seeing more of the island than we should. And we see a little bit of refraction here down in the corner from, uh, from the atmosphere. The photographs are pink because they are from a, a P900, which has been converted so it can take uh, full spectrum, meaning it includes infrared. This means you get much clearer images. If you use a filter, you'll get even sharper, but it allows you to see details when zoomed in of the vegetation and the shape. This ridge here, I think, is especially important. You'll see later. And he took uh, five photographs. They're all from the, about the same location, and they all have uh, GPS data in them. You can go through them, and they all have about the same GPS location down here, just on the beach. And that allowed me to uh, go into Google Earth and find this viewpoint and set up a, uh, uh, a view that's the same. So, let's see. This is me taking a photograph from uh, Vegas, just a show I was there, using my infrared camera. You can see you get very, very clear shots with an infrared camera, uh, with a filter. Anyway, so, back to Nathan's photos. Over here, on the left, is where he is on a, a Huntington Beach. You see it's in the same location as in here. And in this uh, GPS here, you can see this, uh, this waterway here. So it's right here, same place. And I just actually copied and pasted it, the GPS locations. And then what we're looking at over here is Twin Harbors. Twin Harbors is this little town here. Uh, but from this position, we're looking at it like this. And it looks like a bit of a dip in the island from far away over here. And what we actually see is just like a fairly small bit because we're zoomed in a long way doesn't mean we actually get closer, it just means the camera's zoomed in. Let me show you what the field of view is on this. I did a little field of view thingy. And uh, these green lines here kind of show you what the field of view is. It's a little kind of pyramid called the frustum, uh, which shows you what you're actually looking at. Now, I tried to replicate his photograph. And an interesting thing about Catalina is it's got very, very steep sides. If I go over to Catalina, Put all these markers in, I'll show, those. We'll show you what those are for later. Uh, but it's got very, very steep, steep sides. They're almost like 45 degrees or more. So it's, it's an excellent opportunity to see how much is hidden. Because you often get this long slope in front of mountains in other places, and it kind of confuses the issue. But here it's almost straight up. And this, I think, is about a quarter of a mile from this peak here to here. And this, this is what we're seeing. This is the top of uh, the image. And it's nearly 700 feet high, 211 meters, 692 feet. And we're actually going to be looking at that. Now, let me show you from the Nathan's point of view here. So we go over to Nathan's viewpoint here. And we look down here. Oops. And this is what he sees is this little bit here. And this will be the same as in his images, uh, like this one here. But we'll get into the Comparisons more in a minute. All right, and let's do the actual view. If we go down to two meters above sea level and go down here and zoom in, you actually see what Nathan is seeing. And what I can do in this instance is turn off the water in Google Earth. If I turn off the water, the water surface, uh, because the ocean dips down in between, nothing is actually obscured. You can actually see pretty much all the way to the, the bottom of the, the mountain over there. And then we can actually overlay a photograph into this view and we can see uh, how much of this is actually visible. Now I did that by taking a screenshot of this particular image. This is from Nathan's location. Water switched off. You can see if I, if I turn the water on, it's going to give you a pretty good clue as to where it's going to be, it goes right up here is where the water surface would be on a globe Earth. Of course, we've got refraction and, and what not to deal with, but you know this is going to give you a pretty good clue of what we're actually going to see. So what I did is took this screenshot, went into Photoshop, and 
uh, here is that screenshot. And I think we've got down here, high altitude 12 feet. So 12 feet above the water level, which is kind of like up, up the beach a little ways, not very, very far and standing up. And this is what you see from 12, 12 feet away with the water switched off so you can see all the way to the bottom. Uh, this is the actual water line here. And I took Nathan's photographs and I tried to match them. So here is, let's see, I think I've got that turned down. There we go. Here's one of them. You can see here's the contour and it matches the actual contour. You can, a good way of checking that out is to uh, just move it around and you can see it matches exactly. So this is the actual contour and there's the, the contour on the other side. It's slightly distorted because it's a bit further away. But this one, you know, like I said, it's very close to the water. So you, you get a very straight up and down, very straight on view. Uh, let me just undo that. So it moves back into position. So this is uh, this particular photograph. Here's the water line that we're seeing way up here, up the hill. And here's all the stuff that's missing all the way down to, I guess, around here. So about uh, two thirds or so of the hill is missing. Now I, I put some markers on this in Google Earth. Actually, let me just show you the other photographs. Here is another one, just basically the same thing. Uh, again, this, this hill is slightly off because it's uh, further away. And refraction actually raises up the hill very slightly. So as it's further back, you get this tiny little correction that you need here because of refraction, standard refraction, uh, atmospheric refraction raising it up. And then one more, which was uh, one where he zoomed in a lot. Now uh, we can zoom in, let me turn off the other two. Oop, no, that's not right. There we go. If I zoom in on this, you can see, yeah, again, it matches just fine. There's more distortion here. You can kind of ignore this stuff here down here because it's just atmospheric distortion because of being very close to the water surface. If you have a line of sight that's close to the water surface, it messes up. Anyway, here's the horizon up here. All this is missing down here. And a similar type of thing from all the others. Nathan was actually kind of crouching down and standing up trying to take these photos and that does actually make a significant distance difference to this region because your position within the uh your line of sight in the close to the water is changing quite a bit by standing up and down but the tops of the mountains really don't move very much anyway back into google earth keep this image in mind oh this filter here is just a contrast filter it doesn't change anything Keep this image in mind, about two thirds of the way up, just below this ridge, there's this ridge here. And I'm gonna go back into Google Earth. And let me just turn off uh, something so that we don't get, get messed up. I'm just gonna go, let's see, over to P1. P1 is the point that's on top of the ridge that we were looking at. So this is the ridge that's at the top of the photograph. It is this point here. Here's this ridge and you can kind of zoom back and go down and you can kind of uh, see that from lower down. But, and there's a whole bunch of other points that uh, I've marked off just so we can figure out how much of the mountain is obscured. So 700 feet to the top of this ridge. And if you remember, there was this ridge, which is in front of it. And our line of sight was around about here. So if we go to this point here, directly below it, that's 475 feet. And what I actually did is I put in a plane which skims the surface of the water, uh, this horizon plane here. And it kind of shows you what you'd expect on a geometric uh, earth with no, no atmosphere, but still having an ocean. And you would expect it to be about here. Because of refraction, it's a bit lower than that. You see a little bit more, but this gives you a good idea as, as to what, uh, what to expect. So here's our multiple points. Uh, P1 is at 692 feet. P2 is at uh, 100 or 475 feet. And P3 is at 328 feet. And our actual uh, photographs show that all we can see is like about to up here. All of this is missing. And we know for sure that at least 328 feet is missing because this bit here, this point here is not visible in these images. Uh, let's see, I can zoom in on uh, one of them. This is, this is probably the best one. Like you can see this whole ridge here and this bit here. So this whole ridge here. And so we're about at this level. In fact, we're probably a bit above that, above the 328 feet mark. And we're about level with this, but it depends on your point of view. I think, you know, a good thing about uh, 
Catalina again is that you can actually just take a boat out of there. You could actually go over here, you can drive up to this region here, this is the heliport on Catalina Island. And you can go there and you can see just how high this, this hill is, it is actually 700 feet high. It's very uh, very straightforward and you know, here's the, the, the cliffs over here, you could probably walk up this cliff here, it looks like there's some paths. Uh, might just be goat paths, but you could probably hike up there if you really wanted. And you could uh, you know, verify this is the actual height, and you could verify this is what you can see to. And if you were really ambitious, you could go up here with a laser and start flashing your laser towards uh, the other side. You probably could be able to see it with a powerful enough laser in the evening, and you better see about where you were. You know, be careful you don't fall down the cliff, obviously. Uh, but I think this is an excellent demonstration of the curve of the Earth because we're, we're missing the whole bottom part of this island. And if you do the math for how much you'd expect to be missing with the curve calculator, uh, 32 miles away, I put the viewer height here in feet here, just three feet, which is a bit low, it's probably much lower than it actually is. Uh, you'd expect to see refracted, hidden 500 feet. And uh, what was the top here? It was nearly 700 feet, 692 feet to the top. So the refracted hidden would be somewhere down here from three feet, about this level. But I think uh, Nathan's probably more about six to 10 feet because there's a little ways up the beach. So six feet gives a, a hidden of 472, which is more like you know what we see right here, this area chopping off the top. So I think you know, pretty much almost exactly what you'd expect. Refraction does vary a lot, but one thing I said at the conference was you've got to rise above refraction. You've got to make your line of sight to things be above refraction. Because as you can see, when you look at the line of sight of things that are very close to the water surface, you get all this refraction. But looking up higher, like this ridge here and the top of this mountain here, uh, this other ridge, you can, uh, you're can you not really getting anything other than standard atmospheric refraction, refraction from the changing gradient. So there you go, a uh, good demonstration of uh, the curve of the Earth obscuring things.